Welcome back to Bailey Wicked Under Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallies and it's Saturday morning. Look at them cruise ships. Look how close that one is. That is very, very close to the harbour mouth. Closer than it normally is. But anyway, we're not going out this side today. This is the east coast. We're going to go out the west coast. But I've got to come down to the boat to get my weights and my pony bottle. So let's go. This is the joys of diving off the west coast. Everything's got to be loaded in the boat from the pier. And that's if the tides are right. Welcome back to another couple of dives out on the west coast. As you can see, we're out with Paul Carre on his boat, a Channel Island Plastics, called the Dreamcatcher. So what are we doing today? We're not sure. We're heading out. We know we want to do a couple of shipwrecks, but we'll see what happens. One of our major deciding factors will be the tide and what slack when. To today on the boat is Paul Main D, Glyn Caro, which is Paul's brother, and Matt Lemate. There is a shipwreck that we've been trying to dive for a long, long time. In fact, no one's dived it for probably 45 years, and that is the wreck of the Nord. Me and Paul Main D have been out with Dive Guernsey looking for this on numerous occasions but we've always fallen just short. And I tell you what, we were so close to it. There is a man that fishes this coast and he knows pretty much everything there is to know about the west coast. And he's Steve Follies. He's actually kindly put an anchor and a buff into the wreck for us. Yeah, that looks like a wreck. Yeah. After the first couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a pull, pull's off. The, the bell? I'll take two. The bell, Richard's been here. <laughs> <laughs> he never he hasn't got the bell. He, he hasn't. We've got to find right. this crowbar. We have to find the crowbar. <laughs> Hanging off the stern. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to put money, there is no stern. I'm going to put the money, there's no crowbar. 52 years ago, there was. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's two metres off the bottom. Yeah, that there. That. There's some lumps here. Oh, there's a fair off there. Yeah, that's, that's a nice one. That's two metres off the bottom. Yep. I'd say that's a wreck. So it's probably the engine or a boiler. And this is a very early, early one. Lost in 1871. Unless the path we're going to go down. Fingers crossed. I'm sure we'll see something. Shipwreck, maybe? Maybe not. Diver overboard. Looks like Steve Fellows has actually got it perfectly where we want it. So this put the anchor right in front of the boiler. Just to match right, there's the engine. And I tell you what, albeit very dark, the image on Paul's depth sounder is absolutely bang on. We've got a boiler, an engine, and the ribs of the boat. But before we get too carried away, let's have a chat with the only other diver that's dived her. So Richard, is it true you found the Lord? Yeah, well I didn't find it. I, John Girard found it with his crab pubs and he, about 45 years ago. He said, oh, can you come and get my pubs back to me? So we rode out, her help, and got two or three dive bottles and a flat dinghy out to his boat. And we steamed out the bay. There was no electronic navigation in those days. And he's looking behind him, he's looking at hole on the slipway and the lighthouse over the island type job and I'm thinking we're a long way out here and uh, sure enough the Sweeney Bobber appeared he put his phonograph echo sounder on a paper sounder which all we had in those days and it came up a reef and with, uh, we got to within about 100 yards, 100 metres in your language, uh, he turned the ferrograph sounder off and it was up to about 80 feet. But everything was in feet and he said, oh, it's about, it's 110 foot, he said. 
I get to the pot bobber, zoom down the pot bobber, and it's just getting darker and darker, and I'm not seeing anything. So at about 165, 170 feet, suddenly out the seabed, looms this huge steel rudder that was sticking up, with these pots wrapped around it. So uh, I wrapped the pots as I could. There was a really primitive engine. Propeller with square tip blades and a boiler full of uh, conger eels. I had to come up, have a break because of the depth, change my bottle, and then go back down and unravel the rest of his box. And then I went out there with uh, Roy Fairbrush. It's got to be 45 years ago. And How many times did you dive it? That was it. That was it, just the one, one dive. One dive, no, two dives. Two dives, two yeah. dives. We had a good look at it. Um, but she's really an early steamship wreck. Basically, it's just a wrought iron sailing ship with a really primitive steam engine. And she came from Bordeaux carrying brandy, some of which was found floating in the Big Russell by a local fisherman who retrieved and declared some of it probably, uh, but not necessarily all of it. And uh, yeah, she hit somewhere around the Hanwha and drifted up and sank. She's a very early, very early steamship wreck. Oh, cheers. Thanks for that. So that was Richard's account of the dive, and 45 years later, we got the same conditions dark. We have ventured down to 52 meters. Uh, yeah, we are on air. I uh, wish we were on Trimix, but we weren't really planning on coming down here. This is the uh, reason we are only doing a bounce dive on it today. So when I say bounce dive, it's a very quick down. Have a quick look around and then head back up. We've got no alternative gas to swap onto to do our deco. So we're just going to take our time, nice and slowly, but spend a small amount of time and return to the surface. So this thing we've landed on certainly looks like a boiler. There's a round cylindrical thing here. This would have been a low pressure boiler given its age. So I don't know, 50, 60, 70 pounds, maybe 80 pounds of pressure in this thing. It looks like it's been turned on its side and because it's been down here 152 years, it looks like it's had a, a hard life. So we've got one minute already until we go into deco. Let's take a quick look at this double cylinder engine. The loss of the French steamer. This morning at five o'clock, two boats containing 19 individuals, three of whom were females, landed at the slip in Rockane Bay and communicated to Mr. G. Le Couture that they had just landed after sustaining the loss of their ship and all of their effects. The name of the ship was Le Nord of Dunkirk, Captain Le Fur, an iron boat laden with wine and sundries from Bordeaux to Dunkirk. In addition to the crew, 16 in number, Madame Le Fur, the captain's wife, his daughter, and the daughter of the chief officer were on board. Lenord left Bordeaux last Wednesday. The weather last night was beautifully clear, wind in the easterly quarter, and at 8 o'clock the Roche Douze light was sighted. The Hanlar White was shortly after becoming visible. From the cross bearing taken, the commander judged himself at the hour of half past 12 to be northwest of La Hanwha Light, eight miles from land, steering east northeast. Suddenly, a shock was experienced, followed by another. No rocks being visible, much surprise was felt, and the course was continued a quarter of an hour longer while the boats were being got ready to lower into the water. When it became certain that the ship was rapidly sinking, the crew and the ladies descended into the boat and had pushed off before it was discovered that Captain Lefeu was still on board and it was necessary to return in order to save him. 
This was hardly effected before the Nord went down. The boats were then directed to land, where on the crew landing, Miss Licutio extended to the whole of them the most generous hospitality, acknowledged by the commander in grateful terms. The shipwreck party arrived in town this morning and are under the charge of Mr. H. Tupper, French consul. They have escaped with their lives alone, the brief period between the contact and the submerging not permitting the devotion of time to the salvation of property. The commander and his family would take up their residence during his stay in Guernsey with Mr. Simon, Le Coudre, St. Peter's in the Woods. If the information supplied concerning the contact which caused the steamer to strike is correct, it is probable that the Nord struck a submerged portion of a wreck, or as experienced men believe, the shocks were caused by the touching on the outer ledge of the Grunz Rock. For me, this shipwreck is not only a new one to, well, all the divers in Guernsey apart from Richard, it's a very exciting one. 1871 was a long time ago and this is a very primitive boat. So we're seeing technology here including the boilers and the engine, which could be quite important really. Whilst Matt messes around with the shot and tries tripping it, I untangle it from the end of the boilers. So these long rods that are sticking out the side of the stays, that's what holds the boiler from basically expanding outwards. Just about work out the skeleton of the boat. Most of this would have been wood, so basically you're only seeing the iron fastenings and fixings left. start to ascend we look back at the shipwreck trying and take in as much more information as we can but don't worry we'll be visiting this one with Trimex and we'll get a good 25 to 30 minutes on it accomplished. Me and Matt's got a little bit of deco to be doing. I'll tell you what's more worrying, just as we come up to the shot line we've seen tuna jumping out the water. Hope none of them come past us. As always, we're not happy with just one dive. We've done one to 52, and now we're gonna do another one to 35. While we're out this way, Matt and Paul want to see the anchor graveyard. So we're gonna make one more visit down to her. Very short recap on this one if you haven't done this dive before. So Steve Fallies, same man that gave us the Nord, uh, gave us numbers for this. He lost some crab pots in it, he got one of his friends to dive it and said there's four or five anchors. We returned, I think a couple of years later, which was 2022, uh, we dived it and realised 
there's more than four or five anchors. And this is what you're presented with. Still a mystery to us, how did they get here? Why are they here? Were they in a boat? Did they fall from a boat? Loads of questions. But let's just sit back and relax and have a look at all these anchors. In an otherwise featureless part of the seabed, fish now find protection under these cast iron anchors. We have tried counting them, there's maybe 55, 60, can't be too sure. Some are buried, these look like interesting shapes but they're just round stones. They've been rolling around on the seabed here. And under here we can see the remains of maybe the donnage that was holding these anchors down to a deck. Or possibly the side of a barge, we're not sure. Looks to be some sort of iron fixings. Plenty of large wrasse hidden in between. There's even some larger wrasse. So it's cork wing wrasse, uh, gold sinnies, female cuckoo wrasse, pelting, pool cod. All the normal sea life you normally see. 
take a look at some of these some of these flukes are massive they don't seem to be stacked in any real order or any real pattern this one isn't this one's one of Steve Fallies's that he put in a long time ago I'd say none of these are old anchors I'd say they're probably all brand new probably destined for somewhere maybe down at the continent at the time of loss that is not now they're far from brand new now some of the small pelting weird growth here where my hand is not quite sure what that is it's jelly like anyway but not put my hand in it I can't miss the opportunity of my pitch taken I don't know what you think but I think this site is really unique Please, if you've dived something similar to this or you've dived an area where there is a, a huge um, congregation of anchors, uh, please let me know in the comments, but I'm willing to bet this is probably the only one in Europe. Seabed's not too bad around here, it's not too dusty. And there's always a load of tide over the site as well, so it stays fairly clean. At 35 meters, you don't get much time, but then again, you don't need that much time having a look around like I say on some of these uh, wrecks once a year is more than enough for me just coming back and having a little look make sure they haven't been damaged or tampered with I'm happy with that this one still looks like it's exactly the same as when we found it which is good to know look at the size of them two huge ones at the front time to say goodbye try and catch Matt's uh, attention you see me. Yet again, we've been spoiled on this site at 35 meters, and we've got a good 20 meters busier and decent lie levels. on the line one minute ego well I think that meant one minute ego don't know if I've ever mentioned this before but I hate being the last person on the line I know I've only got a couple of minutes safety stuff to do but I always feel like things are watching me. Maybe I'm just on edge because we've seen tuna jumping out of the water. Or maybe I'm on edge because I keep hearing people saying there's poor beagles out there. Oh, just see my reflection in the camera. Third shipwreck. This one's a Breeze's. You ready? Right. 
there they go. If you want to check that dive out, have a look at Channel Island Diving. That's Matt's channel. It's a big old messy deck, loads of gear. And we got to row it in. Looking forward to rowing. <laughs> Matt, what did you think of the Nord? The what? The Nord. Is there any proof it's the Nord? Uh, no, there isn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shipwreck we dived? Yeah, the shipwreck we dived. Well, for the eight minutes we were on it, yeah, it seemed alright. It was great. <laughs> what about the anchors? Enjoy the anchors? That was good actually. For the eight minutes I was on that as well. <laughs> what about the, the Breezies? For the ten minutes I was on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've collectively done 26 minutes of wreck diving today. Three dives, 45 pounds worth of gas. How many uh, meters is stacked up? You've done something like 98 meters, I think, something like that. In two hours. What, what 52, a 35, and a 20. Uh, the anchors weren't 35. <laughs> and a 39. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, end of the day. It's a shame we have to go in, but that's it, we're all dived out. Thanks Steve for giving us the numbers for the Nord, or what we think's the Nord. That was absolutely spot on. And it, it, it was his gear, his line and his buff that was on the seabed for us to uh, dive into. It's a lot bigger up close. JP, you just stay there. You're right, can you handle that? Along with Steve, we really need to say thanks to Paul Caro. Without him being able to take us out to the west coast and actually getting these numbers. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for coming along. I uh, hope you enjoyed them dives. Uh, we will be back to the Nord. We're not sure when. Might be this year, might be next year, might be three years time, but we're definitely going back. I'll catch you on the next tide.